Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture we will do the analysis for the Dolib strong protocol for reliable broadcast which we have discussed in the last lecture and then using the conversion from reliable broadcast to Byzantine agreement we will see a cryptographically and a statistically secure version for Byzantine agreement with a strict honest majority namely with the condition t less than n over 2. So, let us do the analysis for the Dolib strong protocol. So, here is the protocol let me summarize it again for you. In the first round the sender sends its signed message to everyone and recall that in the Dolib strong protocol we have this setup signature setup where every party has its own signing key and the verification key of all the parties will be publicly available. So, during the round once only the sender sends its signed message to everyone and then for round r where r uh, then in round r where r varies from 1 to t plus 1 every party p i does the following in round r. It checks whether there are at least r signatures from r different parties available on any message any value v including the sender's signature. If that is the case then accumulate it and if this message v this value v is accumulated for the first time that means, this is the round r is the first round during which this message value v message v value v is accumulated. Then in the next round relay the collection of signatures on base on the basis of which you have accumulated the value v along with your own signature. PI signature. So, that the number of signatures on the message V is now R plus 1. So, that if no one if anyone else has not yet accumulated the value V they accumulate it in the next round. And then the decision rule for every party PI is that if it is if the number of values number of messages which it has accumulated is a singleton set namely only one value has been accumulated output that value otherwise output a default message that is a protocol. So, now we want to prove the termination validity and consistency property the termination or the liveness guarantee is very trivial to argue. This is because the protocol takes only t plus 1 rounds and assuming every round takes delta clock cycles we know that after t plus 1 times delta clocks every party will output something. So, it will not be the case that the parties keep on running the protocol forever. So, either they will output a default value or some value depending upon the contents of their accumulative set. So, termination or the liveness is trivial. Now, let us prove the validity property where we want to show that if the sender is honest during the protocol execution then all honest parties output only the sender's message with a high probability. So, let us see what happens during the protocol execution if the sender is honest. Okay. If the sender is honest then during the first round it will send its signed message m to everyone. That means, if I substitute the value of r is equal to 1 then every party p i will receive one signed m including the sender signature namely the signed m will be only from the sender itself. And hence at the end of the first round every party p i would accumulate the message m in its accumulative set. Moreover, if there is an attacker controlling some set of parties they might try to forge sender's signature on any other message m star different from m and try to send to the honest parties with the hope that the signatures get accepted and honest parties accumulate m star. If that happens then 
the accumulative set of every honest party will no longer be a singleton set. It will have m and on top of that it will have m star as well. But what is the probability that a corrupt party is able to forge sender's signature on m star different from m and spread in the system? It is very, very small. It is a negligible probability that comes from the unforgeability property of your signature scheme. If you are using a cryptographically secure signature, then this unforgeability property holds with a unforgeability property holds even against holds against a computationally bounded adversary. Whereas, if we are using a statistically secure, if you are if you are using the pseudo signature scheme, then this unforgeability holds against an unbounded adversary. But whatever may be the case, it will be extremely difficult for any adversary to forge sender's signature on a message m star different from m. As a result of that, the accumulative set of every party will be a singleton set at the end of the protocol, namely at the end of t plus round. The only message which will be accumulated, which would have been accumulated by every honest party will be the message m only. Because adversary can never produce a signature on m star and it is only signed m which every party will keep on forwarding to every other party during the t plus 1 rounds and it will be accumulated only once during the first round. After that it will never be newly accumulated because remember once a value has been already accumulated it is never again accumulated and relayed in the next round. We do it we do the accumulation only for the first time. So, that shows the validity property. Okay. Now, to prove the consistency or the agreement property, we want to show that at the end of t plus 1 rounds all the honest parties have a common output even if the sender would have been corrupt and say the sender has sent different signed messages to different honest parties during first round. Even if a corrupt sender does behave like that, we show that after t plus 1 rounds all honest parties will be on the same page and they will have a common output. And to prove this we will basically show that you take any pair of honest parties p i p j after t plus 1 rounds the values which they have accumulated will be identical. The set of values which they have accumulated namely their respective accumulative sets ac i and ac j will be identical. That is what we will prove. If we prove that the values, the set of values which they have accumulated uh, are identical, then it implies automatically that both p i and p j will output the same value because the decision rule is the same for both p i and p j. Check their, check your respective accumulative sets. If it has more than one value, output a default value. If it is a singleton set, output that value, right. So, how do we prove this, okay. So, consider an honest party p i and say there is a value v message v which has been accumulated by p i. Now, that value v could have been accumulated by p i during any of the t plus 1 rounds. It could be during the first round, during the second round, during the t plus 1 th round. Imagine it is accumulated during round number r. Now, why party p i would have accumulated the value v? because it would have received certain number of signatures from parties including the sender's signature on the value v. Now, there are two possible cases depending upon when is the first round when p i has accumulated r. So, suppose the round when p i has accumulated v is less than equal to t that means, it is within the first t rounds within which party p i has accumulated the value v first time. Since it has accumulated the value v first time during the round r that means, it has received at least r number of signatures on the message v value v including the sender signature and it has verified them. And what it would have done? As per the protocol code, there is still one more round left in the protocol because r is less than equal to t. So, we still have at least t plus 1 at round. So, in the next round namely the round r plus 1 p i would have endorsed the value v by 
relaying the R signatures that it has received on the value V along with its own signature. And now this collection of signatures on the value V would have been received by every honest party P j during the round R plus 1. Now, for them it will be as if they are receiving R plus 1 valid signatures on this message V value V including the sender signatures. And as a result they will definitely accumulate value V during the round R plus 1 if they have not done that till now. Of course, it could be possible that P j also has accumulated the value V during the same round when P i has accumulated it. So, that is also a possibility, but what I am saying is that if at all there is any honest party P j who has not yet accumulated the value V by the end of round R, they will definitely do so by the end of round R plus 1. That means, that shows anything which is present in ACK i will be eventually present in ACK j and that shows that ACK i and ACK j will be same for every pair of honest parties. However, the tricky case to argue is when the value V is accumulated by P i first time during the round T plus 1. That means, till round T it has never received sufficient number of signed copies of V, but during the round T plus 1 it has received T plus 1 signed copies of the value V message V including the sender signature. Now, we cannot run the previous argument because now there is not there is no T plus 2th round where P i would have relayed the signature because the protocol is only for T plus 1 rounds. This is not an everlasting process. Right. This is not an infinite process where whenever I see something newly and I accumulate it and sign it and relay it in the next round. I do this process only for t plus 1 number of rounds. So, the previous argument fails here, but now let us try to analyze that since P i has accumulated this value during the round t plus 1, what would have happened for him? It would have received t, t plus 1 signed copies of the message V value V including the sender signature and among those T plus 1 signatures at least one signature will be from an honest party. Right? Why? Because since the signature schemes we are assuming to be unforgeable, it is very unlikely for the corrupt parties to come up with signatures of even honest parties on this value V and send it to P i. No. If at all there is any honest party P k who is listed in this collection of signers who have signed the message V, it definitely means P k has signed the message V and send it to P i during some round. It is not the case that someone has cooked up P k's signature on the message V and forwarded it to P i in this collection along with this collection of signatures on the message V, that is not the case. Now, let us see why P k would have signed the message V and forwarded it to P i. P k would have accumulated the same message V during some round because it has forwarded its own signature on the message V. So, remember in the protocol code a party forwards its own signature on the message provided it has accumulated it in some previous round. So, that previous round during which it would have accumulated that message V will be R star. And remember R star is strictly less than R. Okay, why? Because during the round R P k signature would have arrived that means, at least one round back P k would have accumulated that value. So, definitely during some round R star where R star is strictly less than R P k would have accumulated the value V in its accumulative set. Namely, it would have got at least R star number of signatures on the message V value V including the sender signature. Okay. And in the R star plus 1th round it would have forwarded that collection of signatures along with its own signature, which would have been received by every honest party P j 
during the round r star plus 1, where r star plus 1 is less than equal to t plus 1, right. So, that means, even if p i accumulates the value v during the last round, every other honest party would have accumulated that value, because among the collection of signatures signers, among the collection of signers who have signed v, at least one is guaranteed to be honest, who would have definitely signed that value because of the unforgeability property. And since he has signed the value and forwarded it in the t plus 1 th round, that means at least in some previous round, he himself would have accumulated that value and forwarded it in the next round, which would have been then received by every other honest party and then every other honest party would have accumulated that value. So, that shows that even in this case, the accumulative set of every pair of honest parties will be the same at the end of t plus 1 th round. Right. So, that's, uh, that completes the security analysis. Now, let us do the complexity analysis. How many communication rounds are required in the pro protocol? There are t plus 1 communication rounds required in the protocol and that also implies the liveness property as I have ar already argued. The communication complexity uh, will be n to the power 4 times kappa, where kappa denotes the size of a signature. Why so? So, let us see how much communication happens in every round. In every round, a party p i may need to send a collection of order of n number of signed values to everyone else. Right? So, remember it is forwarding a collection of signatures to every other party. So, in the worst case that collection of signatures could be as large as order of n and this it has to do for it, it has to send to every other party. So, one single party is doing order of n square kappa amount of communication. How many such p i's are there? There are n such p i's. So, each round r involves order n cube kappa amount of communication and there are total t plus 1 rounds. So, t we can always upper bound by order of n that automatically shows that total communication in the protocol is n power 4 kappa bits. And one thing I forgot to mention that the security properties namely the validity and the consistency properties that we uh, argued are achieved even if there are t less than n number of corruptions. Nowhere we use the fact that t is less than n over 2 or t is less than n over 3. Okay. As long as t is less than n we are fine. So, as I said earlier, uh, I have explained we can we can the Dolep strong protocol is explained without assuming what kind of signature scheme is used. If the exact instantiation of the signature scheme is the cryptograph uh, is, is with cryptographic uh, cryptographically secure signature schemes, then the resultant version of the Dolep strong protocol will be with cryptographic security. But if you are using information theoretic setup, information theoretically secure signature scheme setup or the pseudo signatures, then the version of the Dolep strong protocol which you get is statistically secure. Right. So, now let us see a cryptographically secure version of Byzantine agreement with t less than n over 2 and the same protocol can be also considered as a statistically secure version if the underlying signature scheme is pseudo signature. Right. So, we have already a Dolep strong protocol for reliable broadcast which is t secure which keeps all the security properties against t corruptions and imagine we are in the setting where t less than n over 2. So, the Dolep strong security holds even for t less than n, but to get the Byzantine agreement we are assuming now t less than n over 2. And this Dolep strong protocol we it provides you termination liveness, consistency and validity against t less than n over 2 corruptions. Then we can use the conversion from reliable broadcast to Byzantine agreement which we had seen 
long time back which holds where the conversion remains secure as long as t is less than n over 2. So, that is why here I am assuming t is less than n over 2. Okay. So, we can imagine that we have a Dolev strong BA protocol Byzantine agreement protocol where now each party acts as a sender right, and invokes an instance of the Dolev strong protocol as a sender to broadcast its message VI. So, in the broadcast in the Byzantine agreement now every party will have an input. Okay. So, the protocol for the Byzantine agreement here is that every party invokes an instance of the Dolep strong protocol as a sender to broadcast its message namely T plus 1 rounds of communication will happen for the instance of the broadcast where P 1 is the sender with its input V 1. In parallel there will be an instance of Dolep strong running where P 2 is acting as the sender with input V 2. In parallel there will be an instance of Dolep strong running where the ith party is the sender with input V i and in parallel there will be an instance of Dolev strong running where the nth party is the sender with input V n. Now, after time t where t is small t plus 1 times delta which is the running time for the Dolev strong protocol to produce the output every party would have received an output from all the n instances of the broadcast. So, let me denote the vector of values obtained by every party as v 1 star, v 2 star, v n star. Due to the consistency property of Dolev strong with high probability all output vectors are same for every honest party all output vectors are same for every honest party right and from the validity property of the Dolev strong protocol the value output value v star i will be same as the input v i for the Byzantine agreement which P i has. Okay. Now, the output for the Byzantine agreement is said to be the majority in the respective output vectors. If no majority is there output some default value. So, this is nothing but the conversion from the broadcast to Byzantine agreement which we had seen long time back what we are doing here is that we are triggering that uh, conversion in the context of the Dolev strong protocol and getting a variant of the Byzantine agreement which we can view as a Dolev strong protocol for the Byzantine agreement. If the underlying signature scheme is cryptographically secure then this Byzantine agreement protocol will be cryptographically secure. If the underlying signature scheme is information theoretically secure then the corresponding version of uh, Byzantine agreement protocol the same protocol will be statistically secure. So, the steps of the protocol remain the same it just the instantiation of the underlying signature scheme which determines whether you go for whether you get cryptographic security or whether you get statistical security. So, again for the analysis of the Dolev strong protocol I have followed this reference. Thank you.